On Tuesday, July 7th, Supreme Master Ching Hai accepted an invitation to an interview by journalist Ben Murnane for an article that appeared in the Sunday edition of the Irish Independent newspaper on July 12th, 2009. The Irish Independent newspaper is the most widely read daily newspaper in Ireland and is available in all shops, newspaper stands and airports nationwide in Ireland, as well as in the United Kingdom. The interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai, which took place via video conference, covered a broad range of topics, from the current critical state of global warming, the swine flu pandemic, organic farming to rising sea levels, to the detrimental planetary impact of raising livestock for human consumption. It also delved into issues related to implementing the organic vegetarian solution to global warming. We now present the interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai by journalist Ben Murnane. All right, Ben. Any more uh, questions that you already know, but you want to ask <laughs> for your reader's sake? Yes, we have a couple more. Please. We are starting to hear more scientists talk about us only having a few years left to save the planet. And I notice on Supreme Master Television, you have a countdown saying we only have about 1300 days left to save the planet. What leads you to believe that we have such a short time left and what could happen if we miss this deadline? The truth is that scientifically speaking, we have a short time left because we have already waited too long to act. Leading scientists and organizations are now saying this as well, especially as they find that the tipping points, which indicate irreversible damage to the Earth, are being reached much faster than anyone had previously thought and calculated. A group of scientists from the International Alliance of Research Universities just uh, published new findings saying that the rate of sea level rise and oceanic warming are both substantially higher than what the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, estimated just a couple of years ago. You see, this report now forecasts ocean levels to rise one meter by the end of the century, a nearly 70% increase over what the IPCC previously projected. Of course, they estimate a little bit conservatively, you know, yes, worrying maybe to alarm the public or just uh, be cautious, yeah? Similarly, they found that temperatures are climbing 50% faster than forecast by the IPCC. Expert uh, climatologic Dr. James Hansen of the U.S. National Aeronautic Space and Administration, NASA, Goddard Institute for Space Studies, in January 2009, said that we have at most four years left to avoid flooded cities, higher species extinction, and climate catastrophe. These are only few. There are truly too many confirmations of the urgency of our planetary situation to even name it. As for what happens, your question, what happens if we miss the deadline? Yes. Ben, what happens? I do not really wish to envision it. I do not really wish to talk about it. It's terrifying, really. Yes, uh, a long time ago, I sat in the seaside of one of the very big, famous city and nation, rich, prosperous, prestigious seaside and it suddenly dawned into my head questioning my god four years later will this city still exist and i just shook my head i don't want to look i don't want to see i don't want to think about it i don't want to see any vision about it i shook my head and i, I just think in the other direction yeah it is better we Concentrate on the solution to save the earth. We can still do it. We can still do it. If everyone becomes part of the solution, which is the organic life-saving uh, vegan diet, it's so simple, really. It's so simple. It's no sacrifice 
It's even better for health, better for everything. Yes, it's so easy. Organic vegan diet, that's all we need to do. For the time being, and any other green technology, we can slowly develop. Ah, see, we need the solution, which is organic, life-saving vegan diet. Then our future is transformed. Life will quickly become better than what you could even imagine. Greener, lush, tranquil, contentment, happiness, healthy, and uh, more intelligence, more incredible invention will come out of it as the outcome. With no more killing, humans and animals alike will flourish in peace and the world will be restored to beauty and happiness. Uh, but if we do not act now to spare life and offer our kindness, the course of the earth will follow some of the most dire predictions already made by scientists in terms of immense sea level rise, poisonous gas release, and massive extinctions that, of course, could include us humans. I'm sure it could. Some of these effects can be seen already in the rising number of disasters that are causing further hunger, illness, suffering, and death. So, uh, let us all act now to ensure the future that we want and the one we want for our children. That is, be veg, go green, to save the planet. We need to yeah. focus on the solutions, yeah. yeah. Right, look, right. Because the consequence will be too obvious if we don't focus on solutions. European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Call vote. Vote is now open. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. The European Parliament has adopted its own position on climate change as an institution and as a Vice President. One of the proposals I have made is in line with your own, which is that we should eat far less meat because that's one of the major sources of greenhouse gases. We know that uh, the agriculture and uh, the meat uh, production is one of the main cause of gas emission. And so it's very clear that the ratio per habitant of meat has to decrease. My name is Jan Solm. I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please, be veg. Go green, save the planet. Okay, Ben, any more questions? We continue. Next question then. In the past few months, we have heard scientists and environmental advocates on Supreme Master Television and in other media say we need to focus less on reducing CO2 and more on reducing methane, ozone and black carbon, also known as soot. How will this shift in focus help us cool the planet faster and avoid climate change? Of course, reducing CO2 is still important as well, but reducing these more potent and shorter lifespan gases like uh, methane, for example, will bring a faster cooling than uh, CO2 reduction. Besides, uh, these will also in turn reduce CO2 as well as a consequence. Taking methane as an example, scientists at the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change have found that methane actually traps around 72 times more heat than CO2, average over a 20-year period. At the same time, methane leaves the atmosphere fairly quickly. So a U.S. researcher and IPCC member, Dr. Kirk Smith, has shown that within uh, just a few years, 
the dissipation rate of methane overtakes CO2 and is nearly completely gone within a decade. But CO2 will stay around warming the planet for thousands of years. So if we want a quicker cooling of the planet, we have to eliminate those that leave the atmosphere quickly. Is that logical? That's very logical. Yes. And CO2, we will still have time to eliminate. Livestock is the single largest emitter of methane. Moreover, because of methane's faster disappearance from the atmosphere, if we stop eating meat, the planet will be able to cool immediately. Almost, yes. Livestock rising and animal breeding also uh, cause many other damages to our planet. Livestock, by far, is the single largest human-related occupier of land, the main driver of deforestation, the biggest water polluter, and top culprit of biodiversity loss. And that just to name a few of the damages caused by livestock. As for black carbon, which is the particulate matter, also known as soot, ne? A NASA scientist found that it has a serious impact on climate change. Black carbon is 680 times more heat-trapping than CO2. Can you imagine it? So CO2 is not our uh, foremost and urgent problem. The suit, 680 times heat-trapping uh, more than CO2, is accelerating the melting of Antarctic ice, which raises the world sea level. Scientists found that 60% of the black carbon particles in Antarctica were carried there by the wind from South American forests that are burned to clear land for livestock production. You see the connection? Yes. So this pollutant is yet another damaging byproduct of the meat industry again. <sighs> we will destroy the world if we do not stop eating and producing meat and other animal products. So the organic vegan diet is the fastest, easiest, and most effective solution for a life-sustaining planet. Yes, the solution is organic vegan diet. That is the solution, Ben. It certainly sounds okay. like it. Yeah. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of a total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing. A solution for world hunger. Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply, consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production, reduces pollution from untreated animal waste, maintains cleaner air, saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year, stop 80% of global warming, plus more. Save your life. Be veg. Go green. Could you tell me more about how does eliminating flesh foods and dairy products help us to reduce these shorter-lived causes of global warming and cool the planet faster? This is very simple, Ben. The 2006 United Nations Livestock's Long Shadow Report had made clear that animals raised for meat and dairy are responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than all the transportation sectors combined. So why we worry about 
electric car and all that, you know. We will have time to do that if the planet cools down. With livestock as the largest single producer of methane, eliminating meat and dairy products will help to immediately cool the planet. This cools the atmosphere quickly and enough that we have more time, you see, to continue developing alternatives to coal and other fossil fuels. We need to save the planet now, like yesterday. And the organic vegan diet is the one thing, that's the thing that will do that. Another way to help stabilize our planet's atmosphere is to do good deeds. Yes, this spreads the positive vibration and constructive atmosphere we need to counterbalance and neutralize the created existing destructive energy. In this sense, you can say that eliminating animal products is the biggest good deed of all good deeds. Yeah. Because we will save the whole population of the planet, six billion more people. How much more good deed can it be? Yeah. What more good deed can it be more than that, more than saving all the planetary people and the species and all the trees and all the things that we love? So, eliminating animal products or being vegan is the biggest good deed of all the good deeds. Because our cruel and unnecessary murdering of animals would be stopped. The suffering and death of more than 55 billion innocent animals, plus tens of billions of fish, slaughter worldwide every year, would be stopped. This act of human, which heaven could not tolerate to look on, should be stopped. And the more than one billion people who are hungry and dying of hunger-related disease or hunger itself would eat in plenty and live. I wish that day will come soon, like now. Thank you. How does our demand for meat in Europe contribute to the destruction of the Amazon and increased rates of melting in Antarctica? 80% of the Amazon's deforested lands are converted to grazing pastures for cattle. Of the remaining deforested land, the majority is used for growing soy. 85% of the world's soy is fed to the cattle that will be slaughtered for human consumption. And as you may be aware, Europe is one of the top consumers of beef from Brazil. So the Amazon's destruction is clearly linked to meat production. The melting in Antarctica can also be directly related to livestock raising. Again, because the heat trapping potential of methane being so much higher than CO2. In addition, 60% of the black carbon that was found accelerating the Antarctic melt was coming from the burning of rainforests for livestock raising. See, everything points in the same direction. So, that is meat diet, see? If we stop consuming animal products, much of this lethal source is eliminated and the heat it creates will also disappear. See the logic, Ben? Yes, yeah. I'm not talking of meditation, samadhi, we don't need to do all that clairvoyance, we can just uh, see the outcome, you know, of what we do. Of course, the demand for meat in Europe is not the only problem, eh? Yeah, we can't blame Europe alone, eh? The problem of killing animals for food is a global one. In fact, along with stopping meat consumption, we all need to pray for forgiveness. This too is part of the Earth's recovery, the awareness of the suffering caused by humanity and the true desire to reverse this action and to do good instead. Thank you. Thank you. We are in the midst of a global and national financial downturn. How can embracing a vegan diet help us to reduce the costs of lowering emissions? 
the vegan diet is clearly the most economical. This we already know from logical consideration, because with the plant-based vegan diet, we eat directly what comes from the fields. There's no need for the food, including energy and nutrients, to be transported and fed to the animal, and then go through an animal before it comes back to the human. What comes back is a small fraction of the nutrients and energy that had gone into the system, plus a lot of harmful substances and ask for, like fat, cholesterol, hormones, pesticides, insecticides that are concentrated in the meat. There are more than that, huh? These aspects of the meat diet translate into human diseases and extravagantly high medical costs, tax money, eh? which perhaps could have been used instead to help reduce emissions such as subsidies for organic farming, as an example. A more educational institute for the illiterate in different parts of the world, for example. Furthermore, now, practically speaking, a report from the Netherlands called Climate Benefits of Changing Diet found that an estimated cost of 40 trillion US dollars to stabilize greenhouse gases by 2050 would be reduced a full 80% by a global adoption of the vegan diet. See, if we adopt globally the vegan diet, then we will eliminate 80% the cost of greenhouse gas reduction. 80% of the 40 trillion US dollars estimated by 2050. Can you calculate that? Can you wow. imagine that? Wow. Yes, yeah, so we don't have to pay so much tax to begin with because of the greenhouse gas reduction project. All we have to do is just adopt vegan diet and we eliminate 80% of the cost already. That's a saving of 32 trillion US dollars. Such Not a big difference. Of... Not only because of eliminating well over 18% of greenhouse gas emission, but 18% is just underestimated already, yeah? Not because of eliminating well over 18% of greenhouse gas emissions from the livestock industry, but also due to further reduction in CO2, because vast tracts of grazing land are restored to nature as grasslands and forests. These elements of nature are more effective as absorbers of CO2 than any carbon capturing technology, which is still, uh, you know, in suspended testing and it's still risky. The uh, natural land uh, scape of grassland and forest are more effective to absorb CO2 than carbon capturing technology according to UN Environmental Program. Besides, it's risky, I think. It's not tested yet. You know, what if the carbon leaked back into the atmosphere again in a concentrate amount like that? You know, when we capture them, <laughs> Year after year, decades after decade, and then something happened and it leaked up, huh? And then what we do? Yeah. So, with the vegan diet, we eat what's best for our health, for the animals, for the environment, and natural, we do the rest to restore, balance, and save our world. Thank you. So, we have one final question. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change will take place in Copenhagen between December 7th and December 18th of this year. What advice would you give to the leaders making these very important decisions for the people of the world? Well, if I may, I have only one humble advice, that it is important to tackle the root cause, which is animal meat production. If we take the vital step to stop the demand for animal consumption, then the rainforest destruction will stop. The lungs of the earth will be restored. The destructive 
agriculture runoff and pollution will stop. We will have clean air and clean water. There will be more food for the hungry. Above all, when we're free of all the massive burdens imposed by producing and consuming meat, and instead practice the compassionate, vegan, organic farming, then the energy patterns of the world will change to a more compatible waveform with the earth and her inhabitants and with heaven. To produce harmonious weather and benevolent life-supporting atmosphere is all about changing energy. Make good energy, you see. Anyway, even if it's not for saving the planet, we should not continue our pattern of life the way we do up to now. We are human. Human means humane. Ne? We should be what we truly are, humane. And uh, many claim we are children of God, so we should be that. We cannot torture kill of our kind, as well as torture, kill, and eat the innocent animals, the defenseless, the helpless, our co-inhabitants. Though the majority of them could return our violence in manifold, they could even kill us instantly, but they choose not to. You know that, right? Yes. Because they are born noble raised noble and remain noble and loving as they retain the connection with the divine. We, we are the so-called civilized, intelligent, superior species, the human race. Shouldn't we reconsider how to act with befitting manner? That is to protect love and Preserve the life of our co-inhabitants, the animals, the environment. These certainly are recommendable, noble and proper actions. Just be veg, go green, do good. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing this. Vegetarianism in Religion The Baha'i Faith Regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra Also, after the birth of the baby, Care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat, because at the difficult time of birth there are innumerable evil demons, monsters and goblins who want to consume the smelly blood. By ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Kasiti Garba Sutra be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying, or creating evil karma by worshipping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities, because such killing and slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state, Karma means retribution. Kasiti Garba Sutra. Gaudai. The most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints. Christianity. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. 
all men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood. And if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adelila. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith. Jainism. A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been specially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Katanga. Judaism. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible. Blood meaning flesh. Sikhism. Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism. Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta. Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for our health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great, compassionate, loving self-nature, and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Thanks for speaking to me today. I thank you for such a noble journalism like you are upholding because we really need the media to propagate the new noble lifestyle to save our planet. And I thank you many folk for doing this. Thank you truly from my heart. It's an honor to speak to you. Thank you very much again. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I wish you, your newspaper company, everyone and your loved one and island, all the best, all the blessing that you deserve. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you farewell. <laughs> See you someday. Yeah, ciao. I hope so. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, love. been a joy to have your charming company on today's Words of Wisdom. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for music and poetry coming up next after Noteworthy News. May the providence guide your life in nobility, wisdom, and love. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.